Hello and welcome to today's video. So uh, I was recently messaged by a friend of mine about this art challenge to do my interpretation of another friend's Scrappy Chicken. So here's a picture of Scrappy and I'm gonna make my version out of Neofelt, Thebra, Warbla and clay. Now this is the first sculpture I've done that uses all four of those. So let's get started on Scrappy the Cyborg Chicken. The first thing I'm going to do is use polyester fiber fill to make the base of my sculpture. If you've watched my previous needle felting videos, you know I do this because polyester fiber fill is a lot cheaper than the wool roving. So it works really well to use as a base. And you can shape it with your needle felting needles. I'm using this green one, which has three needles in it. And then I also have the white one there that's laying on the foam. And it has seven needles on it. Now what's one thing you need to make sure you do is put down a piece of foam or some kind of cushion, otherwise your needles are going to be going through it and can be hitting your surface below. I have this on my art desk, but it works well to have, I think it's about an inch thick foam, and that'll give it some cushion so I don't one damage my art desk or poke, uh, break my needles. So the next step I'm going to do is cover the entire sculpture with white wool roving. And it's almost an off-white if you compare it to the fiber fill. It is a little bit darker. But that's what I want to do for my base of my scrappy chicken. So I want to cover the entire wing there. And then I want to cover the entire base with that. So if you notice I just made one wing. That's because I'm going to make the other wing out of Thebra. And that's going to be its cyborg wing. So it's going to have like a regular wing and a cyborg wing. I thought it would look good to have one side of it, so I chose the right side to have the cyborg pieces on it, and I'm going to do a cyborg wing on that side, and another piece that's going to go on its head. So I'm just going to continue getting the polyester fiber fill base covered with the wool roving. This does take a little bit of time, and you want to get it as covered as well as you can. The problem with doing this white on white is sometimes it's hard to tell the coverage because you kind of pull that wool roving apart and it gets kind of thin so then you can kind of see that white underneath and it's not a huge deal because it's not like going to be a contrasting color but it does have a different texture so I want to get it as covered as much as I can with the white wool roving. Once I'm happy with the coverage of the white I'm going to go ahead and move on to a light tan color and what I want to do is just give it a very patchy speckled look to kind of mimic or, or at least resemble as much as I can the look of Scrappy. Now to get the look that I want, what I'm doing is I'm pulling off a little bit of wool and I'll roll that up in my fingers and then use the three needle tool to attach it to my base here. And I just do it very sporadically. I don't want any kind of pattern. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to a tan, just kind of a regular tan or a lighter brown color. And this will give me a good mix of colors between the white and the light tan and the tan. So I'm going to go ahead and cover this as much as I can or as much as I feel it needs to to give that patchy look of Scrappy. Now if anybody's wondering, um, I don't really mention how much I speed up my videos, but this sec section here is sped up 36 times normal speed. So it's going by pretty quick, and I'll slow it down in some of the other areas to kind of show more of the detail, but for this it's a pretty simple process, so I didn't want to go ahead and have it be too slow and have this be too long of a video. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the brown. Now with the brown, I want to go ahead and you know do the same thing, but I, there's areas of Scrappy that seemed a little darker and a little bit thicker at least in the pictures I had. So I wanted to kind of mimic that with this brown and kind of fill it out a little bit more. I also knew that I would need to go back after I did the Thebra pieces and add more. 
but I just wanted to get a good start on it and I didn't want to overdo it because I'm going to be adding the Thebra and covering up a lot of this. So I don't want to waste a lot of time doing something that I'm going to end up covering. Now at this point I'm almost done with the body. I just wanted to go back through with some of the other colors and give it a little more coverage. I just didn't think it had enough color to it or enough coverage for Scrappy. So I just wanted to go ahead, go over a few uh, places with it, and give it a little more fuller look. So now that I'm happy with this base, I'm going to start working on the Thebra section. So I've got my heat gun out and I'm going to cut out the other wing out of foam. So I used my first wing as kind of a pattern and I cut out two pieces of foam and then I'm going to cut it out out of Thebra and cover those foam pieces with the Thebra. Now the Thebra I've already gotten too hot and you can kind of see it stretches there a little bit but I'll make it work. Um, I've got to get used to working with it. I've, this is only the second project I've done with it so it is a little trickier than Warbla. You don't need to heat it as much and once you overheat it it really becomes kind of stretchy like gum. So I'm gonna go ahead I'll heat it up some more and get it all get that foam all covered I've got kind of a seam and you see it kind of stuck to the cardboard there so what I'm doing is I went ahead and put down some wax paper to kind of avoid that issue and then I'm just gonna add little pieces and cover up any of the foam that's showing through and then smooth it out so it looks nice and complete now the next thing I want to do is add some feathers now for the shape of the feathers I want them to be kind of rectangular so it kind of has that cyborg robot look and then I want a kind of a pointed end. Then I'm taking my scissors, I'm slowed this down so you can see it, I'm taking my scissors in and cutting little notches and I'll do that for each feather but that'll give me the texture that I want and the look so it has a, a feathered look to it. And I'll do that for each one of these and then once these are done I'll go ahead and lay them out on the wing to see how they'll cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and do two rows of four so I'll heat up the wing first and add them and then I'll go ahead and add my second row of four and these are much shorter and then I'll just heat up some more to go ahead and kind of bond them to that base. Now for the last part of the wing I cut this half circle and covered it up so it looks like it was you know or so it is on top of the feathers and then I'll use my ball tool to add some textures and some indentions I'm going to add little rivets now these little rivets are really hard to t see but what I'm doing is just taking little pieces of Thebra and making little balls and these are going to be what would be the top part of the rivet that you would see that would hold the metal pieces together. Once I get all the rivets done or the balls done I'm going to go ahead and add them to the wing and so the best way to do that is you don't want to heat these up and distort it you want to heat up the wing itself and then you can set them in those indentions and then I heat it up again and press them in place. Now the next thing I want to do is add a piece of Thebra to behind the wing that will attach to the body. And that way it looks like not just the wing is like the robot part, but there's actually part of the chicken itself is robotic. To add this piece, it worked pretty well to heat up the Thebra and then kind of wrap it around the wool. Um, and then I just trimmed off any excess if I thought I had too much. And I tried to match it up as much as I could to the other wing as far as placement and size. Now for the last Thebra piece I want to do here is I want to make a piece that covers part of the head. So I thought it would be best to make like a replica head out of foil and heat up the Thebra and cover that first. And then once I have the shape I want I'm going to go ahead and cut out a piece for the eye and then I just added an indention to make the piece a little more interesting. So with that done, I kind of matched it up, make sure it'd work. And so now what I want to do is make some eyes for it. So I'm using some glass beads. And on the robotic side, I chose to use a pearl one. And on the regular side, I chose to use a black one. And I just thought it would look better if they were different, since it's supposed to be a cyborg chicken. So I'm just using my X-Acto knife and a little pair of scissors to get a far enough indention so those beads will rest in there. I don't want them sticking out, especially since I made that Thebra to kind of cover them and I just wanted it so you could see it inside. And then I just used some super glue gel to hold those beads in place. The one thing you want to watch for is these beads do have a hole on each end because they're made for like jewelry. 
So you want to make sure that's not showing through, unless of course that's the look you want and you want to use that as the center of the eye. I've never tried that, but that might work pretty well too. So with the eyes done and the Thebra pieces done, I need to move on to the Warbler pieces. And although I said Warbler pieces, it's actually going to be one piece when it's done. It's going to be the chicken's legs. So you'll see off to the right, I cut off a rounded rectangle piece that's going to be the base and I'm going to attach it to the chicken. And then I'm heating up some warbler and rolling it into kind of like a snake and using that to make the chicken's feet. So I just added the feet and then I bent it upwards to make the legs and I'm going to do the same for the other one. So I'm trying to make them as close to the same size as possible so they don't look out of place. And once I do that, I can go ahead and add a little more warbler to it so I can attach it to that base that'll go underneath the chicken. So the main thing I want to do is make sure it has the same look and shape of chicken legs. And you'll notice here they were kind of resting on the heat gun. That's because I want them to cool, but the gravity is pulling them down a little bit. So I've added a little bit more to the top of the legs and I thought that would help them attach to the piece, the base piece that I want to attach underneath the chicken. So I'm just going to go ahead and heat that up and get those nice and situated and you'll see they keep kind of drooping so I'll let them cool for a little bit and I can always heat them up and adjust them later too. And although I can't tell how they're actually going to support the chicken I do want to see how the chicken body rests on it so I kind of adjust it and put all the pieces you know, kind of put it all together and see how it looks. Now that I'm happy with my thermoplastic pieces, I'm going to go ahead and start painting them. But first I want to go ahead and add a surface prep, so like a base coat of gesso. And I'm going to go ahead and cover the legs and the wing and the head piece with this. And then I'll let it dry overnight. It might not be necessary to let it dry that long, but that's how it worked with my schedule. The next thing I'm going to do is do a coat of black. And this way I can dry brush over it and the crevices will remain dark. So I just give it a nice thick coat of black, but don't go too thick. You don't want to have it goop up too much. I just want to make sure it was completely covered. If you're worried about it gooping too much, you can always do one coat, let it dry, and then do another coat. But um, this worked really well to do it this way. So once it's covered, again, I'll let it dry overnight. And then I can start with the gold paint. And what I'm doing with the gold paint is I'm dry brushing it on. So I dip my paintbrush in there and then I brush off the excess onto the paper. And then I can lightly drag it over the painted pieces. And what that'll do is you'll just hit that top of the surface. And so the crevices will remain dark. And I think it has a really good look, especially when you're doing something that you want kind of a metal look to it. I, I, I'm really happy with how this turns out when you do it this way. And with the gold paint done, I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry overnight, and then I can start putting it together. And what I use to put it together is super glue gel, and you'll notice I use that on everything, but the reason why I use super glue gel on this is it sits on the surface of the felted wool, where regular super glue actually seeps in. I've actually tried regular super glue when I was out of super glue gel and it did not work as well at all. Just one thing I would recommend if you're gonna do a project similar to this is make sure you use a lot of super glue. Um, I just wanna make sure I get it, you know, cover a lot of the areas so there isn't a place that becomes loose or comes off, you know, in the future. Um, so far I haven't had any issues with any other projects I've done like this, so hopefully that continues to be the case. Now that I've got him put together, I did notice an issue where he was not balancing because he's got that right wing that is made out of the Thebra. It's so much heavier, it's thrown him off balance. So I cut the legs off and moved those forward, and then I'm going to go ahead and you'll see here I'm touching up some of the wool that I had a problem with. And then I also heated it up and moved that leg out. I hate heating up the Thebra with the paint on it because I'm afraid there's going to be an issue there. But I just did it lightly. Actually, the Warbler, rather. But I just did it for a little bit and 
just enough so I could twist it so it would stay. Now the next thing I want to do is add some wool over the base for the legs to kind of cover that up and that it'll give it a more finished look underneath and it'll just look like these robot legs are sticking out. Now I could have made that piece designed better or differently so it looked like it belonged but to me it didn't look like it belonged underneath even though it's supposed to be a cyborg it just didn't look right. And then I'm going through and just adding some more wool to different areas that look like it was too thin. The last thing I need to do is make the pieces for the head. And so I'm making those out of Primo Sculpey. And you'll see off to the side here, I do have some reference pictures of Scrappy that I'm using to help me get these pieces as accurate as possible. I also have my little foil sculpture that I'm using as my base of my head you know when I'm sculpting over so I can get these pieces to match up it really helps with the like the curve of the crest and the angles that I need and this doesn't have to be perfect but if it matches up pretty close it'll help those pieces attach better onto my finished sculpture so these were pretty quick to do so now that they're done I can go ahead and bake them. And remember to always bake your clay according to package instructions. With the clay pieces baked and cooled, I can go ahead and glue them onto the sculpture. I'm again using the super glue gel and then just putting some onto the clay and then pushing it into the sculpture. Once that has kind of set up, I'm gonna go ahead and add some wires. So I've got these wires and what I did when I was sculpting the thermoplastic pieces is I did two indentions on the section on the head and two indentions right below the wing with the intention that I was going to find some kind of wire to run between the two. Now the issue I ran into is the wires are pretty thin so the super glue didn't really want to hold and what I had to do is pull up, you know, fill those indentions with the super glue and kind of let them sit in there for a while and then once it was dry all the way it held them in place really good. Now I did run into an issue where I had some super glue on my finger and it pulled off some of the paint on the wing so I had to go back in and touch up the paint here. So I had to add the black and then the gold again and I just kind of did it once I just let it dry for a little bit and then um, just added some more and then I went through and kind of touched up the paint in some areas. Once I was finished touching up the paint, I was going to go ahead and let him dry overnight again just to make sure everything is completely dry on him. And here is the finished Scrappy the Cyborg Chicken. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I had a lot of fun making this guy. I was definitely... Uh, was really challenging. But I was... Um, I am, rather, very happy with the results of it. It's just one of those pieces that, you, you know, I just didn't know how it was going to look until it was all put together. I try to have a, a visual in mind in my head, and I've done enough things that I can usually do that. But when I'm doing something like this where I've used the needle felting, Thebra, Warbla, and clay, along with two glass beads and some wires, this was definitely a unique sculpting experience for me. But if you'd like me to try to make some other cyborg slash steampunkish type uh, creatures, let me know in the comments down below. I'd definitely like to try more. Um, this was definitely a learning process, and you know, with every learning process, I also kind of think, oh, I could do this better, or I could try this next time. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for watching, and remember, never stop creating. Bye.